<laughs> Seems to me that there are as many ways to celebrate Christmas as there are nationalities. Oh, yes? Please tell us some more, Mr. Nicholson. Well, in some far-off places, especially in the cold and freezing regions, the blessedness of Christmas means not only giving to other people, but also sharing with the animals, both domestic and the wild. Just as you and Lassie were doing this afternoon. Only their custom is to use corn and grain instead of bread to feed the birds and, and the wood creatures. Dad, the birds, they're not the only things going hungry because of the snow. Why can't we, why can't we share Christmas with all of the wood animals? How would we do that, son? Well, we could have people donate hay and feed, and then we could take it out in the woods and spread it around. It would be easy for the deer and other animals to find it. Well, I think that sounds like a grand idea. And we can call it the Animal's Christmas Relief. All right, son. You can take a sack of feed out of the barn in the morning and start the project. Oh, gee, thanks, Dad. I was hungered, and you gave me meat. Inasmuch as you have done this unto the least of these, you've done it also unto me. Nicholson, if you don't have any other plans, we'd certainly enjoy having you spend the holidays with us. Yes, we hope you can. Well, thank you both. I'd, I'd be honored. And we can start the animal Christmas relief the first thing in the morning. Right. <laughs> well, this is good, Mom. Mm, thank you. third day. So if it snows again, there won't be any food lost. Sounds sensible. I guess you can count me in. Gee, thanks, Mr. Livermore. We sure appreciate it. Get your sack of corn. Oh. some feed. Well, we're collecting food for the wild animals, so they won't starve. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Well, I ain't even to give you any feed. I take good care of my animals, and the wild ones can fend for themselves. That's the way nature intended it. But how can they fend for themselves? Well, all our feeding grounds are being buried by the snow. That's not my problem. As far as I'm concerned, animals was meant to earn their keep. Now, oh, this is a lot of sentimental nonsense. And I'm not a sentimental man. Not even in this season of sentiment, Mr. Krebs? <laughs> I got chores to do. Well, let's go. Come on, honey. Come on. I'm sorry we wasted our time talking to him. Oh, I think we gave Mr. Krebs something to think about. We may have even planted a seed in that lonely heart of his. Oh, yes, lonely. Why else should he act the way he does? I think he's just a mean old man. Oh, no, Timmy, don't be too hasty in your judgment. Mr. Krebs may yet open his heart to the joy of this blessed season. Mom and Dad always tell me to think the best of somebody. 
and it's awful hard to think that of Mr. Krebs. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Polly. They don't seem to be afraid at all. I guess they're awfully hungry. What is it, Timmy? Wolves, Dad. They look like wolves. There haven't been any wolves around this area for years. They must be renegade dogs. Good girl, Lassie. church tree? Yes. This is for the animal Christmas project. Oh. <laughs> you like it, Lassie? You've certainly been a big help to us at the church. Yeah. I don't know how the ladies auxiliary got along without him. I was listening to them yesterday after I finished practicing for my solo. I should have heard them. Mr. Nicholson, do you think the Reeves should go over here? Oh, no, maybe it should go over there. Oh, not Timmy. They were just trying to be kind to a stranger. Oh, <laughs> not at all. I can't remember any Christmas when our church has looked as beautiful, thanks to you. Oh. Well, if you're ready, Mr. Nicholson, we better start collecting for the animals. I have to be at church early so I can go over my solo again. Oh, all right. I'll be with you in just a minute, Timmy. Mom? Are you expecting company? Oh, goodness, I hope not. That was all I have to do. Hi, Mr. Livermore, Mr. Krabs. Hi, good morning.